The following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. Now, technically, we just had uh, Memorial Day, which means it's pretty much summertime right now. And I was going to just check in with you guys. I don't know how many of you guys have plans for the summer already. Anybody got summer plans? Okay. About half of you guys got summer plans. Uh, I came here this morning to wreck them. (laughs) I'm kidding. I don't want to wreck your plans. I want to talk to you about your plans. You probably have plans to maybe go on a vacation. Hopefully, you'll get away and get a, get a week away or two somewhere. That would be amazing. Um, maybe uh, at least some three-day weekends or something. Uh, if you have children, um, your kids have a plan for you, I'm sure, uh, because kids wait all year for summertime, and it's on all the time. So a lot of schedule adjusting going on. Uh, so hopefully, you have a plan for the summer. But, but I, what I really want to remind you about this morning is that whether you have a plan or not already, God has a plan for you. And God has a plan for your summer. God has a plan for this summer to be the summer of a lifetime. This can be the unforgettable summer. Uh, we're living in times, I believe God wants to do things, new things, if we recognize where we're at in the seasons and God wants to do some, some great things. I want to uh, unpack this. I was praying this week and Lord, what's your heart for your people? And I really felt the Lord say, talk to them about this summer, their plans this summer. And it was kind of riveting because I'm like, okay, let's do that. So looking at the word and looking at the text regarding our plans and what we do and how we come up with a plan and and we kind of chart our course and stuff. So I'm going to unpack this a little bit with you. And we're looking at um, a a few passages in in, in Proverbs. Uh, But let me open it up with this one you're very familiar with, Jeremiah 29, 11. You've heard it all before. Uh, We have it for the screen up here, I I believe. Um, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And they're not to harm you, they are to prosper you and give you a hope and a future. God is saying, I have a plan for you. Like the song that we sung earlier, I have a plan for you. And and, you know, I don't know about you, but I have to keep coming back to that promise of God, of God's plans, God's providence, his sovereignty, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful. The Bible says we were wonderfully and fearfully made, stitched together in our mother's womb, that all these days were ordained for us, that God had things written down in advance for us to do before we were born. These are all truths of Scripture, of the Bible. This is pretty cool stuff, if you ask me, because some people just wander through life thinking, well, what is tomorrow going to bring me? And God's like, I know what tomorrow can bring you if you walk with me in this thing. I've got some great things for you to walk out because I have plans for you, and they are not to harm you. They are to prosper you and give you a hope and a future. And that is where things begin with God. Trusting in God, trusting in his plan. His plan began began with giving his son Jesus to us, and that's where the plan begins. This isn't plan B for God, this is plan A. God wants you to get in on plan A, not plan B. Plan A is, I got a plan, it starts with my son. When you turn and follow my son and recognize he paid a price no one could pay, That's where it begins. And then I put my spirit inside you and I begin to lead you through life with the word of God as a a map and the spirit of God as a compass inside. Internal GPS that God has been putting in the hearts of his people for 2,000 years. And he's like, I got a plan and this is where it begins. And he starts to unveil the plan and show us the plan and, and give us some sequences and steps. It's really amazing. But... God has a plan for us. Now, here's the irony or the the paradox. We have a plan for us too, don't we? God has a plan for us, and we have a plan for us. We've got all kinds of plans. We've got tons of plans. The Bible talks about plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to store up. I'm going to build that. I'm going to do this. And, And the Bible says, well, you don't even know what tomorrow has in store. We're not in control of our destiny. We don't control it. We can just partner with God in the destiny, but we don't control the destiny because we don't control everything around us. But God has a plan for us. It's to prosper, not to harm, a hope and a future. And this paradox of 
you and I having a plan for our life and God having a plan for our life. And these are two different plans, oftentimes, even in the life of a believer. And they're running their course parallel to one another. And sometimes there's these diversions going on where we're getting away from God or closer to God or maybe charting our own course a little bit. But God has a plan for us and we have a plan for us. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, God has an amazing way sometimes of changing our plans. Have you guys noticed that? Little, little uh, school of hard knocks, God giving you a tune-up or a, a pop quiz of some kind. You know God is giving you a pop quiz when you sense God go, pop, now you're being quizzed. Um, a pop quiz from God where, where we had a plan and God just kind of changed it. He kind of wrecked our plan or he might have just smiled and thought, that's really nice, you, you have that plan. I've got such a better one for you. Um, these plans, we make them all the time, but God has a plan for us. And so there's this paradox between God's plans and our plans. And I think the thing about God is when we're making these plans, uh, sometimes we're making plans without checking in with God. We're making plans and we're not checking in with God. This is a, a problem at the very core of its nature because God who loves you more than you could ever love him back, who knows you better than we even know ourselves, who has a plan for us. Sometimes we're making our own plan. We're not even checking in with him. And that is going to be, that's not going to set us up for success uh, in, in God's eyes and in our opportunities. I believe from God's perspective, think about this, we're looking at life in a linear way. We're trying to see down the road. We can only see so far ahead. We're trying to figure things out, but God, the all-knowing, loving Father, looking down, sees thing in, things in 3D, 4D, 5D. He sees every dimension. He already sees if we make this decision, these will be the chain of events. If we make this decision, he sees it all. He sees it all. And so from his perspective, he sees opportunity that we are simply not capable of seeing. God sees opportunity for you and I, that we are clueless to. It doesn't matter how smart we are or, or, or how much we think we understand plans and, and the best road to success, God sees what is unseeable to humanity. He's the all-knowing one. We are not. It says in Proverbs 55, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. My ways are as high above yours as the heavens are above the earth. Um, God's ways are higher than ours, and he sees things. And when we are um, making these plans, I think oftentimes we don't realize it, but we're missing opportunity, and God sees the opportunity. It tells us in Ephesians 5.16 that our job is to make the most of every opportunity, recognizing the times. Recognizing the times. Sometimes we're not recognizing the times, and therefore, we're not making the most of every opportunity, and yet we're making a plan. And I think that's very well intended. There's nothing wrong with that in principle, but from God's eyes, spiritually speaking, he is saying, make the most of opportunities and recognize the times. If you're a note taker, uh, talking about this summer that can change your life, uh, God's summer plan for you uh, and for me. Uh, the first thing, if you're a note taker, there's four key points this morning, and it's, it's to recognize the times and to make the most of every opportunity. To recognize the times and make the most of every opportunity. It is so important in life to recognize the season that you're in. Recognize the season that you're in. There are a, se a, a series of seasons in our life. You can't look at life as just life. Uh, life has a series of seasons. The Bible says there is a season for everything under the sun. And, and there's a season when you're young to get, you know, trained up and get developed the right way. And hopefully you've got parents and teachers and mentors shaping and molding you in the things of God. That's great. And then there's a teenage stage where teenagers start kind of uh, maybe challenging what they heard or uh, what they were taught to come up with their own, um, you know, landing on their own uh, perspective of what God is saying to land on their own understanding. Uh, and then there's that, uh, the college age where you're kind of out there, you hopefully gave kids roots, and now it's time to give them wings. And at some point, you got to let them fly. And that's hard to do. It's a totally, totally different season. 
And then 20-year-olds, you know, maybe they're 25, 30, and finally getting married and taking steps on their own into marriage, maybe, which is a whole other season of, wow, soulmate, what does that mean? And what does God do here? And what is this season? It's, it's a beautiful season. Um, even the Bible talks of a, a season where newlyweds, when they get married, to take a year off of battle. And that's a season. And then after that, you know, there's a season of raising children and season of sleepless nights. Anybody had any of those? Season of sleepless nights? Yeah. Um, we have five, so we understand that one. Um, you know, there's different seasons. There's different seasons. And, you know, I talked to some of our friends who are further down the road and their kids are, you know, off to college and out of the house. And you're thinking, wow, what's that like? You know? And then pretty soon there's a season where there's a grandkids coming. That seems great because you get to spoil them, but you don't have to discipline them. That seems pretty cool. Uh, we talk about that. But there's seasons, but spiritually there's seasons in your life as well. There's an unfolding of these seasons. And if you and I were to recognize the times, recognize the seasons, and be committed to making the most of every opportunity, our plans are going to start lining up with God's plans. There's going to be a beautiful merger of, of these plans. Uh, it says in Proverbs 19.21, we have for up here, it says this, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Interesting. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. This shows us that tension, the tension we have between our plans and God's plans, because we have many, quite honestly. We have many plans on what we think we're going to do or when we're going to do it or how things are going to happen. And the word of God is saying, yeah, but God's got a greater purpose. And guess which one's going to prevail? Guess which one prevails? God's purpose prevails. And so when you and I are trying to figure out this planning thing, it's so important that we merge our plans with God's plans. We've got to merge our plans, almost like getting on a freeway. Um, someone's got to go forward or back. You've got to do something to merge if you don't merge, there's a collision. There's a clash with God. He's going to prevail. So we want to come in and go, God, I'm going to get right behind you on this thing. I want my plans to line up with yours, recognize the times, but I also want to um, merge with your plans. And I would suggest that if you are willing to do that, and it's hard to say, okay, I'm going to take my plans and give my plans to God. But if you're willing to do that, trust is going to be the key. Trust is the key. Because trusting God with your plans is literally putting your future. A lot of people will come to God and say, thank you, God, for sending your son. And thank you for taking away my sins. And thank you for my eternal life, which comes later on in heaven. That's beautiful. But trusting God with your life here and now and trusting God with your plans, that's a reality of him being the Lord. That is something that we have to come to terms with. And hopefully, since we have many, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails, hopefully you and I are willing to say, all right, God, since your ways are going to prevail, not my ways, and since your ways are higher than mine as the heavens are above the earth, let me go ahead and fall in line and merge with you. Let me learn how to trust you. Uh, this method of trusting God, uh, the Bible uses a term, uses it over and over again, and it's a term called consecration. Would you say that with me? Consecration. One more time. Consecration. What consecration means, what does it mean to consecrate? It literally means taking something, putting it on the altar for God, and letting God do with it what he wants, what he wills. This means whatever gift he gave you, to take it and say, thank you, I realize it's from you, I want to put it on the altar. This is tough to do. Whatever God has given you, experiences, resources, I want to consecrate. I want to trust you with this. This is a challenge people have because we, we oftentimes say, well, I have plans in my own heart for that gift, for that talent, for that resource, for that whatever it might be. And God is saying, I understand you do. <laughs> my ways are better. My ways are higher. I gave you those things. And if you would consecrate them, you're willing to merge your plan with God's plan, and therein lies the blessing. 
It's trusting God, merging with God, who is the all-knowing one. And although many are the plans in these hearts of ours, many are the plans, it's the Lord's purpose that's going to prevail. So we can either say, thank you, but no thank you, and try to work this thing out on our own, or come to terms with, God, your plan's going to prevail. I want to line up with you. At some point in your life, as you walk with Jesus, you come to terms with the scripture that talks about the lordship of Jesus, not just the Savior, but the Lord, really being the Lord of your life. It's hard to tell who, you know, who makes Jesus Lord. It just becomes an evident after, evidence after a while. But if he's the Lord of your life, you would say to him, and you'd be able to say to him this morning, Lord, I am not my own. I was bought with a price. Lord, I'm not my own. I was bought with a price. In the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died and gave himself to me. But if you're not ready to say, I'm not my own, then you're not really ready for this consecration step. And I want to challenge you because this is where you get in on the abundant life. This is where you say, thank you for the gifts, talents, and resources. I'm merging with you because many are the plans in my heart, God. I've even got plans for my summer. I've got all kinds of plans but I am going to merge them with you to line up with you because your ways will prevail. And I want to be on the prevailing end of this deal. This is where it lines up. Um, So second point this morning is, is this, and it has to do with consecration. It has to do with you and I trusting that we can actually put things on the altar. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to trust that you really can. Second point is this, anything you give God, he will give it back to you better. Anything you give God, he will give it back to you better. You can trust him with that. Anything that's broken, give it to him. Anything that's good, give it to him. Anything you give God, he will make it better. Your gift, your talent, your resources. He's the God of multiplication. He's the God of love. Say it's a relationship. Say it's a marriage. Give it to God, he will make it better. It's a relationship, give it to God, he will make it better. If it's a talent, give it to God, he will make it better. That's what consecration is. Thank you, God, I'm putting it on the altar. I can actually trust you with this. Might not be easy, but I'm trusting you with this, God. God would say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've chosen to get on the prevailing side. The prevailing side. Many are the plans in a person's heart. But it's the Lord's ways that prevail. It's the Lord's purpose that prevails. This is how we learn how to trust him. Uh, Another great scripture on this. The Bible's got so much to say about our plans and how we kind of come up with a strategy for life and kind of chart our course, so to speak. But Psalms 37.5, we have for up here, many of you know this passage, but commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. This is building on the same theme here. Commit your way to the Lord rather than know God. I'm doing my way, but I want you to bless my way. I want you to get on my team, God. And God is saying, I hear you, but no, you get on my team. You get on my team. I love that passage in, in, uh, in the Joshua as they're about to, uh, the story of Joshua, the narrative, they're about to come into the promised land as they're finishing Exodus and they're coming into the promised land, and all of a sudden there's a, an encounter with this mighty angel of God. But Joshua is not sure who this is other than it's the most powerful, mighty, magnificent thing he's ever seen. And, and he's like shaken in his boots. And he's like, uh, and, and now Joshua is a commander of a whole army. He's not a guy who's easily frightened. This guy's got a lot of so, soldiers at his disposal. And he's walking out in the desert and he encounters this massive looking angel, which I don't know, the Bible doesn't say with swords or whatever it might be, but whatever it is, Joshua's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I got one question. Are you for us or against us? Because if you're for us, we're going to win. <laughs> you're against us, we're going to run. Are you for us or against us? And the angel, representing God's presence and glory and message, says neither. It's not about God being for you or against you. It's about you and I lining up with God's purposes. And that's where Joshua learned, oh, I see how this thing works. 
It's the same for you and I. Many are our plans, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You know, consecrated plans, plans that we give to God, plans that we put on the altar, this is telling us that if our plans are committed, committed to God, if our plans are placed in God, that we trust in him and his ways, it says these plans will come to pass. You know, so many people have plans that don't come to pass, and oftentimes disappointment. The Bible is saying that if we commit our way to the Lord and trust in him, that he shall bring things to pass. I don't know about you guys, but I'm realizing more and more every day there is so much that I am incapable of doing, and there's so much that God is capable of doing. God can move things. He can shuffle things. He can turn things upside down, and we, and we can't. And, and even if we get better and smarter and have better strategies and more resources, we're still so limited in those things. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, those who guard over it, guard it in vain. We can have all these plans, but it's God Almighty himself. That if we trust in him, we consecrate our plans to him. He is the one that will see these things through. He is the one that will, quote unquote, bring it to pass Uh, Hudson Taylor said this, we can make our best plans and try to carry them out in our own strength, or we can make careful plans and ask God to bless them, or we can begin with God and ask his plans and to offer ourselves to him to carry out his purposes. Hudson Taylor was used by God in profound ways. And the stories of God moving through him and the people around him are being spoken of today because he realized out of these three choices, I'm picking the last one. I'm not just going to come up with a plan and say, bless it, God. I'm going to say, God, I want to get on your side with this thing. I I got many plans, God, but it's your purpose that will prevail. I want to line up with your purposes. I want my plans to line up with your purposes because there is where they prevail There is where they come to pass, according to Scripture. Uh, This one's great too, Proverbs 16, 1 through 3. This is is a great passage, again, talking about our plans and and what we do and our nature. You know what's amazing about the Word of God? Um, This is written, you know, some, you know, 2,800 years ago or so. And um, this, you know, Proverbs, the condition, the nature of people has not changed at all. Uh, It's not like we've outgrown this. Uh, This stuff is timeless, the nature of people, what we do, why we do it, how we plan, how we try to come up with our purpose, our mission, our aim, and our agenda, and how we're going to get there. Nothing's really changed. And God all along saying, I hear you, and I appreciate that, but I've got a better one for you. Uh, the tension of that, uh, the dichotomy of God's plans and ours has been going on for years. Uh, Proverbs 16 uh, says this, to humans belong the plans of the heart. But from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. You can underline that in your Bible. This is a promise of God that you can hold on to. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. This is God establishing things, establishing things that we cannot establish. Plans prevailing that we can't make prevail, but God can. And if we commit our things to God, if we're willing to do them God's way and put them on the altar and say, God, I want you to smile. What makes you smile, God? I want my plans to line up with yours, that if we commit to the Lord, whatever we do. And I love the whatever we do because God is so creative and so uh, all-knowing that there are so many different things that we can do and commit to God. And God is willing to move forward in these areas. It's it's an amazing promise of of God. And I think the point is that his plans are so much bigger than our plans. Our plans are like one-dimensional. Like we're looking down the road of life in front of us. We don't even understand the next seasons to come. We really don't. We think we know. We don't really know. We'll find out when we get there. But God's like, I know what season's to come, and I'm preparing you for that season. I know you don't realize that yet, but I'm preparing you. And because of that, 
go with my plan here. Because if you go with my plan, you're going to be really well positioned for that next season to come up. Um, His purposes are so much bigger. His plans are so much bigger. His will is so much better. Uh, And if we commit our plans to God, he's going to be the one to establish them. And I think that's amazing because we all would say, yes, we would love if these plans, God, would really be established. A plan can just be a dream. A plan can just be an idea. But if it's going to be carried out and executed, if it's going to be on display, if it's going to give life and bear fruit, we need God to establish these plans. And this is where you and I take our plans, merge them with God, commit them to God, put them on the altar, consecrate them, and watch the radical things that God will do. As I was praying over this message, I really sensed the Lord speak really, really clear to me. And um, I always tell it's when the Lord's voice, because I have one of those Scooby-Doo moments. You guys remember Scooby-Doo? It's like, huh? Uh-huh? Huh? Like, what? You know, sometimes in ways that are not even a, a language that I use or a typical phrase, and I'm like, what? Um, when I was praying, I sensed the Lord, I was asking, Lord, what's the, your heart for your church? What, what, is, what is your heart for your people this, this Sunday? And, and I really clearly sensed the Lord say, don't go on vacation without me. Take me with you. And I was a little baffled about that because I said, well, Lord, you'll be with us always, right? And God reminded me, no, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. If you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. And on the mission of the Great Commission, when you go ye therefore, representing Jesus, and you go out on mission, and that's the context of this, will you go out to represent God and to fulfill the commission and to be a servant of the Most High? Yes, I will be with you always, but... If you and I want to check out, if we want to bow out, if we want to walk away, if we want to go on a vacation and just kind of chill and go our own way, God's not, yes, I'm chasing you and I'm going to to make my presence known even if you're running away, even if you're flying away or going a different way. I, I, I really sense the Lord saying, take me with you this summer. I really sense the Lord saying, I have a plan for you this summer that can change your life. Take me with you. And the nature of people, I was kind of shocking to kind of hear that from the Lord because now that I think about it, and I never really did, summer is a time where as people, our nature, at least in America, we do get very casual. Summertime, it's casual. Flip-flops, shorts, go to the beach, you know, whatever. Go, and that's fine. Chill out, get some rest, have some fun, healthy recreation. That's awesome. But I think spiritually... I think spiritually, we do a similar thing. I think in the summer, we tend to get casual with God. And I really sense the Lord saying, there's some seasons upon us where this is not time to get casual with God. This, there are seasons among us where it's time to press in and get closer to God and closer to his heart and hearing his voice now more than ever. We are living in times, family, that Western civilization has never seen anything like this. If you look at the unfolding of time, the sequence over the last even 3,000 years, and you were to look at a line from that wall all the way over to here, and you were to look at 3,000 years and you look at change, change happens so slow. From people sailing boats with a sail, thousands of years doing the same thing. Maybe getting on a horse or an animal to take you somewhere. Same thing. Nothing's really changed. Finding a better way to do it, same thing. You get all the way over here, if this is the last 3,000 years, and somebody comes up with an electricity and steam engine. Right about here. Well, that's novel. Internal combustion. Wow. Electricity. Telephone. Wow. All of a sudden, we're into nuclear physics, atom bombs, World Wide Web, sending things to Mars and beyond, sending back information, people Skyping people on the other side of the globe in high definition on their TV, talking. It's like, are you kidding me? The Bible says that at the end times, one of the signs of the end, and I don't mean end like be afraid end, but God has you in the season where the world's changing faster than anything we've ever known, that wisdom and knowledge will vastly increase. Wisdom and knowledge will vastly increase. And it also says that people will go to and fro very rapidly. 
You could not have said that for the last three, four, five thousand years, six thousand years on planet Earth. There's been virtually little or very slow change. But in this little window, right about this big, we came upon an industrial revolution. And we came upon technology and discovering things and breakthroughs. And, and, and it's not over, but we're living in times where God chose you in his plan, <laughs> his plan, not our plan. He chose you to be here at such a time as this. And because he chose you to be here at such a time as this, this is no time for us to get casual with God or come up with our own plan or our own sequence because God has us here intentionally and he wants to see things done and fulfilled in our lives with him. And this is where the blessing is and this is where the fruit is and this is, where the, this is the hope, this is where the future is. This is a time more than ever that we draw near to God. And I, now I understand why God would say, don't go on vacation without me. At first, I was a little shocked. Why would you say something like that, God? Aren't you with us always? It's like, no. I never leave or forsake you, but you leave or forsake me. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I get that. And summer is a time where this stuff happens. So guys, this can be the summer of a lifetime. I believe God wants this to be the summer of a lifetime in, in our lives. Um, this summer, whether you're staying here or going there or going anywhere, uh, this summer can be the most unforgettable summer of your lifetime. We can come back from this summer if we partner with God with some amazing God stories. Some amazing God stories of let me tell you what God did this summer. I don't know if you have a summer in your life or a year in your life where you would point back to and say, let me tell you what God did that summer. But this summer can be that summer where you say, let me tell you what God did this summer. And this summer could be filled with stories where God used you spiritually to save a life. To save a life. And you get to come back and go, I can't believe God used me. It was the coolest thing, but... I got to save a life. Really, you saved a life this summer. Yeah, God did, but I was there and he, I was willing. I was drawing near to God. He was drawing near to me. He showed me an opportunity. I stepped into it in faith. And guess what? There's a life saved this summer. Hallelujah for that one. There's a life saved this summer. That's a summer of a lifetime. What about bringing somebody back who got way off track? Somebody you know. Friend, family member, somebody... They were walking with God at one point, but somehow, some way, they got way out there. What if God used you to bring them back? That's the summer of a lifetime. That's an unforgettable summer. That's a God story saying summer was worth it because someone was lost and now they're found. That is a really amazing summer. What if you got stirred in faith in a way that you don't normally do, or God stirred your faith where, where God showed you somebody or a situation where God said, Psst, I want you to walk across the room and lay hands on them and pray for them. And God actually does a miracle. What about that? Would that not rock your world if your plans lined up with God's plans? That wouldn't be your plan to wake up in the morning and say, I'm just going to go pray for someone. They're going to have a miracle. We don't have those kind of plans, but God sees everything. And God says, I'm going to have, I want to do this in this person's life. Would you listen to me? Would you line up with me? Would you walk across the room? Can I stir your faith today, even though this might sound crazy to you to pray for a miracle because it's outside your theological box? Does God even do those? Why would he use me? Forget that. He does these things. He's looking for people to use. Eyes of the Lord going to and fro. He's looking for people to use. John and Peter, when they were walking into the temple that day, they didn't say, hey, John, Peter, what do you think about this? Why don't we go find somebody in the temple and why don't we pray for a guy and make him walk today? Sure, that's a good plan. No, they're walking and God's like, psst. Okay, here we go. Bam, silver and gold I have not, but walk in the name of Jesus. And this guy gets up and everybody sees it. That is God's plan for that man's life. That Peter and John were simply willing to merge with God's plan and walk in it. What if you were to be used by God this summer where he stirred your faith, where you went across the room or the cubicle or something to pray for something that's a little bit crazy and it should be crazy because it shouldn't be something we can do. If we can explain it, maybe God wasn't in it. A big thing, a big thing, kind of a crazy thing, kind of a reckless faith where here goes, I'm getting out of the boat on this one. Hey, if it doesn't happen, don't worry. It's between God and them. 
has nothing to do with, well, well, how do I explain this? Don't take control of that. That's not for you and I to take control of. That's not our, our wheelhouse. That's God's. But he's looking for his children to walk in his promises. What if that's the one you're going to do this summer? And you're like, wow, let me tell you about this summer. Changed my life. Wouldn't believe what God did this summer. God had a summer plan for me. And I walked in it. Wow, it was the summer of a lifetime. Um, what if it was to speak? We're talking about this on Wednesday. Hearing from God and hearing what God has to say and the faith to willing to walk over and share with somebody a message of God, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, something prophetic. The Bible says desire prophecy. This is something in the New Testament church. You can't read the New Testament, the book of Acts, and, and, and not see this theme running through where God speaks to people. You can test it with the word of God, so nothing weird, no crazy stuff. The word of God will verify this stuff, but God says they desperately need to know this my love for them or my plan for them or, or an insight that they're clueless to, but I have it for them like a golden nugget and they're not seeing it. Would you give them this golden nugget, please? Will you give them this diamond, please? Sure, God, if you say so. What about that? What about imparting something like that that turns someone's world around and gives them a hope and a future and a whole new path or whatever it might be simply because you lined your plan up with God's plan? Is that cool or not? That's a summer of a lifetime. That's a summer of a lifetime right there. What if, what if you were able to help in a friend's marriage where their marriage is basically shipwrecked? It's ready to hit the rocks. It's ready to come apart. The boat's ready to come apart and everything's going to come out of the boat. You know what I'm talking about, right? See this stuff happening? And other people are given messed up counsel. They're not given godly counsel. And what if you were to walk in the middle of that situation and speak life and speak the redemptive power of the living God that we serve that when we give him broken things, no matter how broken he can fix it, what if you got the, God used you to save a marriage this week? Would that be the summer of a lifetime? That's like a gift that keeps on giving. God wants to do this kind of stuff all the time. And he uses people like you and I. We don't have to have some, you know, crazy experience. Or you don't have to be trained in any kind of profound way. Just say, God, I love you. I'm reading your word. I'm praying. How do you want to use me? I know you have the best plans. I want mine to merge with yours. I want to put mine on the altar. What does that look like this summer? God would say, well done, good and faithful servant. You answered the right answer. And because of that, I'm going to put you in places and in ways. Uh, what if you, God used you to help see someone delivered from an addiction. An addiction. An addiction that's killing them and it's killing the people around them. What if God used you in this moment of clarity and revelation where they realize I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm finally ready. What do I do? Here, take my hand. I'm going to lead you to the one who has the answer for you. I don't have it. I don't have it. I know the one who does. Come this way. And you bring them to Jesus, the author and perfecter of their faith, the deliverer, the redeemer, who can redeem that area of their life. There's a ton of God stories in that area. Maybe you're going to get to share one after the summer. God used me to help somebody get free. It was awesome this summer. That's a summer on the altar. That's a summer where our plans line up with God's plans. That would be absolutely amazing. Maybe you get to bring a friend or a family member to Jesus. Their whole eternity is changed forever. Yes, summer of a lifetime. This one's going down in history. This one's going down in history. You know, this is all really cool. You'll say, wow, what an amazing summer. Or, or, if you don't want to do this, you can just um, go to Disneyland. <laughs> get a t-shirt. Get some pictures. How was your summer? We went to Disneyland, got a picture. I got a t-shirt. It's great. Exempt from any kind of God story. How was your summer? I went to Hawaii for a week and did some snorkeling, saw some pretty little fish. Hey, that's cool. Anything else? That's it? Okay. That's all right. God is saying, don't go on vacation without me. Take me with you. I will never leave or forsake you, but please don't leave or forsake me. Do you understand what he's saying? I know you got plans. That's beautiful. Line them up with me. Merge them with me. Watch what I will do with them. The fourth and the final point this morning, if the worship team comes up, is this. 
Know that God has divine appointments waiting for you. If you are willing to line your plan up with God, he has divine appointments waiting for you. Encounters with people, times, and places that only God can orchestrate. You can never even try to orchestrate this stuff. But God will put you in a place at a time to see something or say, Psst, look, or show you something that you would normally completely miss out on except for you said, God, I want my plans to be yours. He's like, that is beautiful because I want to do things in people's lives and I would love to use you as an instrument of my love. I would love to use you as an instrument of my grace, my power, my mercy, my insight, perspective, revelation. Can I use you that way? And if we're willing to say, yes, you can, then this becomes a summer of purpose and a summer that will go down in history in our lives of, wow, God, you met us. God has you in such a time as this. And family, this is not a time to check out. This is a time to engage. It's in time to engage in the heart of the Father, to be in his word, to be in prayer, to be led by the Spirit and say, where do you want me? Where do you want me positioned? And God's like, oh boy, you're in for a, you're in for a cool journey now because <laughs> you're lining up with me in a whole new way and it's gonna be an amazing, amazing uh, journey. So I just wanna close in prayer on this note. Ask for God to seal some of these things in our heart. Um, mighty God, I just, I just thank you for your word and what you talk about our plans, Lord God. I pray that, uh, Lord, our summer plans would be your summer plans for us, God. I pray there'd be a change, a shifting in our life and perspective uh, that we would know that your plans will prevail and ours are just good ideas. And Lord, I pray we'd consecrate, put on the altar, Lord. We pray even this summer, God, what do you have for us this summer? Rather than writing down a bunch of things that seem like a good idea, we'd say, what do you have for us this summer? That you would give us some spiritual goals. You would give us some spiritual things to aim at, God. And we would make that part of our summer plan. Uh, Lord, that we would take you with us. You will never leave and forsake us. But God, we would make the commitment today that we are not going to leave or forsake you this summer, God. We're going to walk with you more intentionally, God. And I pray, Lord, that by faith, Lord, by faith we would expect that when we walk with you, there will be divine appointments. You will put people and opportunities in our path that we never could have dreamed of or orchestrated. And some of those will be to completely bless us and some of those will be for us to bless others. But Lord, I just wanna pray for that this morning, that this would be a summer of a lifetime, that you would do some great and mighty things in the hearts of your people, Lord God. You would take us deeper. We would fall more in love with you than ever before, God. We would see things we've never seen before. We'd come back, Lord, almost like we went around the world, but spiritually speaking, saying, wow, let me tell you what God showed me this summer. Let me show, tell you how God grew me this summer. Let me tell you how God used me. It had nothing to do with me. It was all him. I was just simply available. But these are all the radical stories, the God stories that come out of a summer of the hearts of people that, the hearts of people that are willing to line our plans up with you, God. Oh, Lord, we love you and we praise you this morning, God. I also just want to pray, Lord, if uh, there's any burdens or needs or, 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 or uh, things in our heart that we need to work through, God, with you this morning. Uh, that, Lord, just uh, anybody here with any kind of burden, extra burden today, extra weight, extra need, whether it's a physical healing or whether it's a, uh, just a, a pain or a problem or a dilemma or a choice uh, that is a little, uh, hasn't been answered today. Uh, Lord, I just pray they'd come up to our prayer team and just pray and, and agree in prayer uh, that you are good and that you will meet those who ask, Lord, that you are a provider for those who ask, Lord, uh, that we trust that you will meet us in these areas, God. You will give us wisdom when we ask, um, Lord, show us, Lord, how to pray for these things. And I pray for breakthrough. But Lord, let us be people of proclamation. Let us be people who live for your glory. Lord, we love you so much. And I just thank you by faith that this is gonna be the summer of a lifetime, that you're gonna do some really cool things. And Lord, there's gonna be some awesome God stories. And, and I just pray some of them even start this week. Give some of us some radical God stories this week that next week we're already sharing these God stories when we line our plans up with you. We love you, we praise you. We thank you for these things and we pray these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen guys. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. We pray that this message has blessed you. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit us at valleymetrochurch.com.